hell did you get that thing? You remember that convertible sports car the Kingfish wanted to sell me for 50 bucks sight unseen? Yeah. Well, this is the sight. Been better if I'd have unseen it. And you ought to know better than buy anything from the Kingfish. He always manages his gift. Yeah, this is the straw to bring the camel back. I'm going to tear that Kingfish in from them. Now, uh, just a second, man. Ain't no need for violence. Now, I'll go in there with you, and we'll tell the Kingfish he just got to give you your $50 back. Come on. Oh, yeah. I got the $50 right here in my pocket. Well, I'm so glad to hear it. I've got to get a new dress before Phoebe Harris arrives in town. Oh, uh, that, that old girl friend you me about, the one who become uh, a famous stage actress. That's right, George. I want to impress her, so don't let anything happen to that money because I want that dress. Don't worry about a thing, honey. I'll be home with the money in a little while. Goodbye. Okay, Kingfish, give me back my 50 bucks. What 50 bucks? The 50 bucks you done snooking me out of for that old beat of jalopy. Now you give it back. Oh, now, nah, nah, Andy. Kingfish, give Andy back his money. Now, look, Amos, this was a legitimate deal. Andy said he wanted a convertible automobile, and it's as representative. It's convertible, and it's an automobile. Now, look, Kingfish, it was a crooked deal, and you know it. Now, either give Andy his money back, or I'm going to advise him to go see a lawyer. Uh, unhappy with the car, huh? Well, everything I sell has got a money-back guarantee. And if you're dissatisfied, I give you back the guarantee. I mean the money. Put the cash right there, Kingfish. <laughs> there you is. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now, Andy, if you would like to buy... Oh, no. He's not buying anything more from you. Kingfish, why do you always have to be dishonest? Ooh, me? How did you turn over a new leaf? Start right now. Make an honest man out of yourself. You never get away with crooked deals. Remember that old saying, your chickens always come home to roost. Think it over, Kingfish. All right, Amos, I will. Well, so long. So long, Andy. Bye, Amos. See you later. I guess that teaches you a lesson not to mess around with me, Kingfish. Yeah, Andy, I guess you're right. You're too smart for me. Uh, it's time you found that out. Yeah, I should know better than to try to put over anything on uh, alert, wide awake, a high IQ fella like you. Yeah, that was your big mistake. Andy, I've been thinking of what Amos said. I should turn over a new leaf. Come out of the cocoon of questionability and become a butterfly of respectability. I give you three to one. You don't even get off the ground. Andy, it's going to be tough. Everybody in town say I am crook. The world's against me. No friends. Even you have deserted this sinking ship. I ain't deserted no ship. Glad to you see that uh, true and faithful old pal, thick and thin friend, because now is the time that I really going to need you. What for? To help convince the world that I'm the reform man. And from now on, I want to be known as Honest George Stevens. Honest George Stevens? Now, Andy, this is going to sound strange. Here's the way we're going to do it. Oh. What's the most honest thing in the world? Well, uh... Right, a bank. And why do people say that a bank is honest? Well... Right. Are they holding your money for you, and any time you want it, there it is. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad you agree with me, Andy. So I'll accept the uh, $50 uh, off for deposit. Now, wait a minute. But, Andy, that's the only way we can do it. Now, you give me your $50 to hold, and any time you want to see it, I show it to you. And that makes me honest, just like a bank. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but I know I'm going to get it back. Look, Andy, when you go to a bank and ask for your money, you get it back, don't you? Sure. Dan, what are you worried about? Yeah, but how is that going to prove that you was honest? Because, Andy, you going all over town and tell everybody that honest George turned over our new leaf Stevens to the man that's holding your money, and you can get it back any time you want it. This proved the point. Now, let me get this straight. I give you $50. Then I goes all over town and tells everybody you was holding my money, and I can get it back any time I want it. And that spreads the word that you was honest, huh? That's the idea, Andy. Now, you just give me the $50, and then get out and get the good word to rolling that after all of these years, 
You can trust the kingfish. Hmm. Okay, kingfish. Here it is. There he is. See you later. Oh, I think I see him. Yeah, give the old boy a pat on the back and tell him he's doing a great job. Yeah, I see Andy. Hey, Joe, wait up there. What's the matter, Andy? The kingfish done turned over a new leaf. He's going straight. Have you been set on this so long? Oh, no, on the level. I'm letting him hold $50 for me to prove how honest he is. $50, huh? Yeah. Oh, excuse me, Joe. I got to drop by the drugstore and tell Charlie. <laughs> $50. Hey, Joe. Old Honest George Stevens just paid me back $5 you guys out of me on a season pass. Great. Honest George. How about that $10 I paid you to show me how to cut my telephone bill in half? Well, I give you the scissors, didn't I? You just paid me my pen. There you is. Thanks, Honest George. Hey, fellas, come on in. Honest George. Hey, hey now, George. wait a minute. Ella, Ella. you is. That beats me. That's my last five. Well, thanks, Honest George. I'll be seeing you. Okay. Well, so long, son. Your chickens always come home to roost. Now, tea here, yeah, Amos. Oh, hello, honest George. Oh, hello, chicken. Oh, I mean, Andy. I just make it sure there wasn't a hole in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of fellas come up here. I suppose they were congratulating you and stuff and wringing your hand. <laughs> yeah, they took me through the ring already, man. Well, uh, how's my money coming along? Oh, fine, fine. Yeah, well, let me take a look at it. Now, look, Andy, you can't be coming in here any old time and staring at the money. Well, you said I could look at it until my wallet. Well, that's true, in a way. What do you mean, in a way? Look, Andy, when you got money in a bank, how do you know what's in there? Well, they showed me the balance on a piece of paper. Exactly. <laughs> There you is, Andy. Balance $50. Oh, now I feel better. For a minute there, I didn't think you had it. Yeah, I'll take another look at it, Andy. There it is. Oh, I'm convinced. Uh, but I'm closing out the account now, and I want my money back. Now, look, Andy. You can't be coming in here, opening and closing your account that way, and let it be draft into the bank. No, but I need that 50 to pay my room rent for a month. I just let you have the 50 so you could convince people that you was honest. They convinced. Now, I want my money back. But look, Andy, there's a whole lot more people need convincing. Why, I ain't even scraped the bottom of the bell yet. Okay. Well, you can keep the money till 5 o'clock, Kingfish. But I'll be back to get it, and I want it in cash. Well, Andy, uh, 5 o'clock is a little after bank an hour, but so oh, we'll work something out. Yeah, I'll be back at 5 for the 50. Yeah, Andy, be back at 50 for the 5. I'll be looking for you. <laughs> Why don't you answer the phone? Calhoun, I concentrate with myself. I'm being pressed all over with pressing matters. Hey, would you want me to answer it for you? No. I don't know who it is, but Sapphire quit ringing in a minute. <laughs> Calhoun, leave me alone. I've got to concentrate here. Hmm, five minutes to five. It's in five more minutes, they close the trap on me. Hey, they, they can't beat their Andy down there. Uh-oh. <laughs> you coming in? No, he stopped to talk to somebody. Calhoun, for once in my life, I wish I was somebody else. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing, King Bitch. I read in the paper the other day about a fellow over in Jersey that found out he was somebody else. Quit reading. I ain't gonna answer. Oh, <laughs> uh, Calhoun, uh, what was you saying? Well, you see, it happened like this. This fella got hit on the head, and when he come to, they found out that he had had amnesia for 20 years. Uh, the hit on the head brought him back to the fella he was 20 years ago. He didn't know nothing about what had happened that whole time. Hmm. 20 year lost weekend. <laughs> Found out he was somebody else all the time. Didn't remember. Calhoun, I just remember an important job I got to do down in the storeroom. Oh, hello, Calvin. Hi, Andy. Uh, where's the kingfish? Uh, he's here. Uh, where? 
Michigan Boulevard on my way to the voting place in Chicago. Voting place? Yeah. By the way, uh, did Calvin Coolidge get elected? <laughs> Is it possible that he could have had amnesia all these years and that bump on the head there brought him back to himself? Well, there have been such cases. I think he's faking. I've seen something like this on television. Oh, uh, what television? That's radio with talking pictures. <laughs> What's talking pictures? Don't you know me? Yeah, you look like Slim Johnson, the one who won the turkey trot contest uh, at Liberty Lake last week. He's just fooling us to get out of giving me back my 50 bucks. He's the kingfish. I, Tom Smith. Look in his wallet. There's nothing in here. No money. Nothing. That's the kingfish, all right. Give me back my dough. You got it here somewhere. Uh, careful. He may have a concussion. If he ain't, I'm gonna give him one. Kingfish? Ah, uh, who's the kingfish? I am Tom Smith. Andy. Come here, man. Now, look, Andy, ain't no sense in getting all excited. But he's got my money. I got to pay my rent. That's just a stall. Well, maybe it is, but we can't be sure. Not even the doctor can say definitely. Now, he did get a bump on the head, you know. Well, the only thing I'm sorry about, I wasn't the one to give it to him. What are we going to do? Well, I suggest that you take him home. If anybody can tell if he's faking his sapphire. Yeah, she got the extra lie. Uh, Doctor, uh, we've decided that Andy will take him home. Well, that'll be best. Uh, thank you, kind friend. Come on, Tom. Yeah, now I'll show you how we get there. We go down State Street and we catch the trolley somewhere down there about the loop. And then we are... Oh, uh, shut up. Well, uh, 23's can do to you. Hey, there's my car. Oh. Well, where did you get that beautiful new model car? New? Yeah, they just come out two weeks ago. You sold me this thing for 50 bucks. 50 bucks for this beautiful new model car? I must have been out of my mind. Yeah, and I'm sticking with you till you get back in your mind. Then I get my 50 back from you. But I'm sorry, kind stranger, but I can't be responsible for anything that I might have done while I was that fish king. Kingfish. Who the kingfish? Oh, man. Get in. Well, thanks for calling, Amos. Personally, I think George is just pulling a trick for some reason. And I think I know what it is. No, as far as I know, he's never been to Chicago. Don't worry. If he's faking, I'll soon find out. Can you see I live here, a kind stranger? You know darn well this is where you live. <laughs> I've never seen the place before in my life. That's your apartment right there. George Stephen. Who George Stephen? That's the kingfish. <laughs> uh, who the kingfish? <laughs> you ask me that just once more and I'm going to climb all over you. George. Uh, who's George? Oh, shut up. Uh, Sapphire. Who's Sapphire? Now, you know very well who I am, George. Uh, dear madam, I think you were mistaken. My name is Tom. 
You're George Stevens, my husband. Well, I appreciate the compliment that you implicate that I is uh, married to a beautiful young girl like you. But I never seen you before. I a Chicago man. Oh, get on in there, Tom. Well, what a beautiful and luxurious apartment you have here, madam. Your husband must be a kind and generous man to give you all the finer things of life. Look, Amos called and told me what happened. Uh, Amos who? Amos Jones. Oh, uh, I know a fellow named Clyde Jones. Uh, he helped me put out the Chicago fire. You're faking, and I know it. You haven't got the money for that new dress you promised me. How will I ever see Phoebe? Uh, who's Phoebe? Uh, she, uh, uh, yeah. George, you pulled some pretty raw deals, but this is the worst. Well, now, beautiful and uh, charming stranger, just like I was telling the fat boy here. You know my name is Andy. Well, just as you say, fat boy. This is how it happened. I was walking down the street in Chicago on my way to vote for Calvin Coolidge. And some bricks fell off of a building. And the next thing I know, I wake up here in New York, and they tell me that 20 years done gone by. I the victim of amnesia. Amnesia. Yeah, I've been amnic all these years. And now I kind of tired. I think I go get into bed. Now, if you will just show me. Bed? Nothing. If you're not George Stevens, you're not my husband. And you can just get out of this house. Now, hold on, Emil, or whatever kind of Jew you is. If you say we are married, we are married for better or worse, richer or poorer. Amnesia or non-amnesia. And when you take the nuptial vows, you nuptilate it. And that's that. All right. You can stay. But you sleep on the couch. What about me? Where are I going to sleep? Tom here done got my room ready. You can sleep on the couch, too. Good night. I never understand this. Oh, it's awful, Mama. He's been like this ever since Andy brought him home last night. Home to Mr. Chicago, huh? Let me talk to Andy. He had to go downtown. Oh, Mama, what am I going to do? Let's go in the kitchen. I'll find out if he's faking. <laughs> George? George! Oh. oh, hello. Who is this, Diamond? You know who this is. This is my mama. Oh, what a young, charming, cute mama you got. Oh, don't try to kingfish your way out of this. Oh, uh, who's a kingfish? Mama. And when you finish eating breakfast, you can wash the dishes. i sorry, madam. But Tom Smith of Chicago don't wash no dishes. Oh, if you are Tom Smith of Chicago, I don't suppose you're anything like George. Oh, no, we are two total strangers. Mm-hmm. Well, George never did work. I suppose you do. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look for something today. Really? And what line of work are you in? Oh, I am the uh, armed guard of manufacturing business. You see that them elastic band that men use on their arms to hold their shirt sleeves up. Oh, well, they don't make them anymore. Then it's going to be hard to find the job. Then how do you expect to pay all these bills? Bills? Hmm, George Stevens, George Stevens. These ain't mine. I, Tom Smith. And I'm only responsible for what I've done back in Chicago. Come on, Mama. Oh. Hello, Tom. Oh, uh, hello, Emerald. Oh, sit down, you poor man. Tom, I apologize. You were right. I was. I is. Uh, uh, oh, what about? About being Tom Smith. You're exactly who you say you are. Oh, yes, of course. I... How you know? Well, I just came back from the Missing Persons Bureau, and they wired Chicago and found out that a Tom Smith did disappear from there just when you said you did. Well, uh, yeah, that's just like I told you. And your wife was so happy to learn they found you. Wife? Yes. She flew out from Chicago as soon as she got the news. 
Hi, Mrs. Smith. And now I have you again. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello, I Glenda. Uh, excuse me, I got a putin engagement out the back way. Come back here, you. That's how you disappeared the last time. Now, look at here. That's now. me and our nine children and all of those bills. Nine children and bills? Are you sure that uh, you got the right Tom Smith? You know, the phone book is just full of them. You probably got the wrong number. You're my husband, all right. I'd recognize you any place. You know I can identify you. You have a scar on your left shoulder. Well, I have. And that's something only your wife would know. <laughs> Get your things together, Tom Smith. You're going back to Chicago with me to our nine children and the bills. Oh, well, I'd like to, but I can't leave my wife here. Oh, I'm not your wife. I'm married to George Stevens, the man who owes Andy the $50. And you are Tom Smith, father of my nine children. Make up your mind. Who are you? Well, uh... I better go get me a drink of water so my head clear up a little and think this thing out. <laughs> oh, what is I going to do? If I say I Tom Smith, I got to go back to Chicago with that battle axe. <laughs> and if I go back to being the kingfish, I got to face Andy. Oh, what is I going to do? an awful long time. What's he doing? I don't know. He... Oh, who's Tom? I had a kingfish. Yeah, I brought you a little refreshment here. Oh, Thanks, how nice. Honey, I'm sorry about that dress you wanted. <laughs> well, at least you know who you are now. Yeah, uh, funny thing about that. I remember going down in the basement over to the lodge hall, and when I come to, I uh, laying out there in the kitchen. You don't remember being Tom Smith? No, uh, where is he from, uh, Detroit? Oh, George, you answer the door while I go get dressed for the theater. The theater? Yes, we're going tonight. Hello, Tom. Uh, who's Tom? I had a kingfish. Oh, so you're back to yourself again, huh? Uh, no rough stuff, Andy. I'll give you your 50 bucks somehow. Oh, I already got the 50 and a lot more, kingfish. Huh? Yeah, Amos found an automobile dealer who bought that old wreck for me to use in the showroom as a display. He gave me $300 for it. $300? You sold my car? Who's car? Well, Andy, you dissatisfied with the car, and I give you your money back. And it's mine. Yeah, then you took the money away from me, and I never did get it back. So it's my car. Well, Andy, being there's some question about the ownership, why don't we just split it right down the middle? Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm going to give you 50 bucks so Sapphire can have that dress. Oh, yes, you were just wonderful. Thank you. Phoebe, I want you to meet my husband, George. How do you do? Uh, how do you do there? Uh, hey, ain't I seen you somewhere? Possibly. Did I look anything like that? Mrs. Smith. Isn't she a wonderful actress? Yes. Yeah. But you should have seen her in her most successful play. Yeah, what was that? When the chickens come home to roost. 